I'm Mark Sperling, Director of Trading with T3 Trading Group and contributor to T3 Live. Do you trade on your own, but you wish you enjoyed the benefits of a large trading floor? With the T3 Live virtual trading floor, we deliver that experience to you on your computer. On the VTF, you can follow the long and short positions of experienced professional traders like myself, Scott Redler, and others, and listen to our live radio stations as we navigate the markets. In addition, you get the added value of a large community of sophisticated and like-minded traders. In my opinion, joining the room will be the best trading decision you will ever make. I would like to invite you to begin your membership with a seven-day free trial. To get started, visit t3live.com and click on the Virtual Trading Floor tab. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the VTF. Good morning. My name is Scott Rudd, the Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. Welcome to today's morning call. It's Monday. It's a new week. By this time, I'm sure everyone knows what happened last week. You know, we had volatility pick up. We had the accelerated trend line that we've been following for multiple weeks finally broke. You had the 8-day, the 21-day moving average slice through. And those are the moving averages that traders that trade actively for P&L tend to follow. When those moving averages break, that's the time to reduce some risk. That's the time to figure out what you're committed to, what you want to hold. And, you know, you, you take some off and some even flipped short. Okay, with that being said, you know, coming in today, you still see some red arrows around the world. The emerging markets that have been a problem for multiple months are continuing to get louder with a lot of their currencies. You had Europe down small, didn't fall apart. Yeah, the Nikkei plays some catch up because again, they had a lot of room to the downside, somewhat like we did, you know, versus what they did last year. You know, and then the Shanghai continues just to be a, a bit of a problem spot as the China cash crunch is getting louder. Another spot that is very sensitive. So with all that being said, the question is, what do you do? Which trend do you follow? How active are you? We approach this week, we have earnings reports across the board. You have the Fed on Wednesday, and there's gonna be a lot of action. And depending on how you approach it, there could be some good opportunities. You look at the chart here of the SPX and you will see, you know, you look here at all these different trend lines and these mean something different to everyone that watches this. Okay, if you look up here, that is all that happened last week. Down 3% off the highs after about a 30% move last year on top of, you know, a 15 to 20% the year before. So if you look here, this macro trend line, not in jeopardy, no macro damage. You go to the intermediate trend line from November, this also, no damage. But if you want to take a closer look to what a lot of us follow here at T3, including myself, to try and navigate for cash flow and P&L, here is the trend from October that came all the way up. Okay, here is the upper area, that wedge type pattern that wound up breaking on Thursday. Very surprising. I know I was positioned for an upside and had to switch some gears pretty quickly. Then this is when you broke the 821 day, so you could have sold 1830. You could have also gotten out a little bit right around here at the 50 day when it didn't hold, and then this was your close. So with that being said, futures are up a little bit. And just be a little careful. I have a feeling a lot of traders are going to have short on the brain because of, you know, it's opening up versus opening down. Here is the 50-day moving average. That's 1812. And then here is, you know, another area that broke. So I would say this is resistance one, resistance two. So make sure if you are looking to fade the open and you don't see things go red quickly, just know we came that, you know, pretty far way down. You might get squeezed. If we do go from green to red real quickly, you know, hopefully that would set up a nicer trade. And then you have the low here of 1790. And then we can create that red dog reversal where if we push through the low, you know, you have then a decent level of support that comes in right around 1775. And then I just showed you this macro or more intermediate trend that has the 100 day at 1762. So with that being said, you have to figure out what you want to do today. If you did reduce some risk and you were hoping for a down open, I'd let things play out a little bit. If they do go from you know, uh, green to red, you know, see if they could push through um, Friday's lows with whatever sector you're trading. You know, and I'm looking across the sectors to try and figure out what could help us figure out what's next. And there's really not that much that's standing out because it's still, this could be the beginning stages or not. You go to the cues real quickly, you'll see here, you know, this 
you know, has two trends, this one being the more intermediate and this being, you know, a upper level one. And then really just this accelerated or the upper area is what broke. So here the Qs aren't at the 50 day yet. So you are seeing some relative strength in technology. So look towards technology. Here is um, Friday's low. So same type of scenario. Either they could, you know, push it up a little bit to resistance at 87.30 or 87.60, or if they can't, they break it below Friday's low, and then we see what's next if we get some kind of red dog reversal at this pivot. So, you know, the Q's showing some relative strength. The, the bios, which have also been very strong, you know, stuff definitely showing relative strength. You know, it only broke the 8-day. Look where the 21 days and look where the 50-day is. So it's got a ways to go. But here's the thing, guys. When a corrective phase happens, you don't know if the strongest sectors play catch up. So, and obviously you could see with the bios, they were a little frothy in a lot of rooms. So don't do things too early because we're all trying to figure it out. And 3% or so off the highs was the norm last year. Is it the norm this year? We don't know yet. So with that being said, uh, like just look at the financials that came into this year. Everyone was thinking they can continue, including me. And then earnings came out and they actually sold the earnings, giving you a little bit of a red flag. You go to the XLF, and you look here, okay, you look at these trends. This broke the 8 and 21 day. That was your spot to get out of Dodge, so to speak, or reduce risk if you were in there. Then it didn't, it tried to hold the 50 day on Thursday, but then, you know, if you were playing it there, <laughs> look what happened on Friday. Sliced right through it. So this almost looks a little bit more like the S&P where, you know, it could be heading to the 100 day. So with that being said, it's probably up a little bit with the futures. So see what type of bounce it has and look where it came from. So if you start shorting early, you can get in trouble. But if they do go from green to red and trade it through the low of 2111, that would be nice for a red drug reversal, but we don't know that's the case. So, you know, we have earnings this week. High beta names have been all across the map. We know some breaking down, some holding up, you know, a lot of them still, you know, not much damage. But again, if you're trading for P&L and you hold through something like just say Google, um, and you didn't think you could, you, know, that you thought you could handle it, you got pretty, you know, hurt on Friday. And we talk about these accelerated trends. Look at Google real quick. Google has been following the eight day moving average the majority of the time. Okay, so if you've been holding this and tracking this when it broke this area, you know, hopefully at a high level stop. If you've been in it since the gap since earnings, you know, maybe you, you stick around a little bit longer. Okay, and, but again, you want to always lock some things in. So right now, just like everything else, here is you know uh, Friday's low of 11.23. These earnings are until later this week. Maybe it's up a little bit with the futures. If it could hold, okay, cool. If it breaks below Friday's low, you know you know some guys might try and short it. That's your actionable pivot. As far as um, something like Netflix that came out with earnings, that should be on your radar. Okay, this is your gap up. Um, and if you look what just the market showed you or I showed you with the other sectors, this held pretty well, developing a nice pattern. So as long as this stays above this little earnings gap of 377 and goes, you know, gets tight, maybe there's a nice trade there. Put that on the radar. Okay, now back to this morning, Caterpillar came out with numbers. Caterpillar's numbers look pretty good, you know, uh, from face value. And it, it just came in from 92 right into the base and opening near 90.91. I'm sure everyone's going to try and short that on the open. I'm probably not going to touch it, but I'm going to see if it could hold. If it could hold, maybe that'll help support a little bit of a bounce in the overall market. So here's, here's 90, and then here is you know, resistance, and then you have the highs there. A lot of people probably trapped short or at least not in it, so this was a bit surprising. All eyes after the close are going to be on Apple. Apple, you know, since the double bottom over the summer, it's been trading very well trending higher, getting tight again. It's up five, six dollars pre-market. We know Icon's been very busy. He's been accumulating it. I think first time we talked about his buy was back here. You know, so instead of, you know, people being worried about that he took money off the table because it's a hundred dollars higher, he's still buying it. So that, that breeds a little confidence. I'm going to take, you know, calls, which I've had for the past few sessions into the earnings. It's got to clear 560 after hours and hold above it after the report. If it could hold above 560, maybe it helps technology and you get a break above 575 and you see relative strength in Apple because Apple really hasn't done much for the last year and a half when the market had a big move. So with that being said, people are going to be looking obviously at the iPhone numbers. So have them in front of you, have the iPad numbers in front of you and have China expectations. So write out that whole report if you're going to trade it. But most important is the action. Above 560, after hours, some traders, maybe even me, I'll try and buy it. If it can hold 560, stay with it. If it opens up and can't hold that, 
You know, I'm just sitting in the options. If it were to get down to 530 on a number that's disappointing, you know, let's go back to that chart one more time. That would be a spot to look to, you know, make sure it holds. That's 530-ish right there. You know, and then you have 522. So it's very tight. Let's hope they deliver. That could help. As far as something like Facebook, that's later in the week. You know, we've talked about this. You know, this is just to give you a, a little bit of example like Netflix. This one had a nice earnings gap, went sideways, and then continued. That was a powerful pro gap. Okay, this was one trend, broke, red dog reversal to the upside, and then remember we were trying to play it for a breakout right here? Uh-uh, didn't work. Sell signal, you know, that was 58 half. Hopefully you got out of it then, and, you know, now it's back into this longer-term channel, and maybe it gets some support, you know, around here. Here's your uh, 54 um, 40 as your red drug reversal point if it wants to stay in this upper trend as this trend line catches up. You know, and then I think earnings are later this week, so we'll get closer. But overall, you, there's always signals. Listen, it wasn't strong enough to break out. And if you're playing for a breakout, you got out. If you've been in this long since here, you know, maybe you're not too worried about this, especially if you're going to be a Facebook fan for multiple years. It all depends on your time frame. As far as um, just say the metals that have been strong, metals have been strong to start the year. Here's a double bottom that the gold bugs were all talking about. And then, you know, the next step was this inverted head and shoulders pattern that built. You had the left shoulder right here, the head, the right shoulder, you know, still somewhat strong. It's down a little bit today because the futures are up. So I would say this, if the gold bugs want to keep this interesting, you know, they should hold the GLDs above 121-ish. Okay, if they really want to keep it pent up, they hold it above 121.55, which was the low from Friday. So with that being said, you know, this is still trending. So, so far this year, it's been a better long than a short. See if that continues. And if the market's going to continue to get pressure, this relationship could, uh, you know, stay intact. So with all that being said, well, there's been a lot of newspaper articles written about a 10% correction, a 15% correction, a 20% correction. So far, it's been 3.1% off the highs in the S&P. I know if, you, you know if you're an active trader, that still hurts too. If you were playing for a breakout and you didn't use high-level stops you know, and you were jumping out of your skin over the weekend, you know that you, know, you didn't actively manage your situation good enough in order to you know, get yourself feeling comfortable. And then co even coming in today, if you, if you press shorts over the weekend thinking we're going to have a doomsday down open, you're probably a little uncomfortable. So what you want to do is don't be uncomfortable. Do what you can handle. Okay, just like the 3.1% off the highs, if you're a macro investor and you've been putting money in every single month for the past decade, this doesn't matter to you. You keep doing it, it'll help your average cost because I'm sure at some point or hopefully at some point, whether it's this year, next year, the year after, the market will make new highs and you're in it for the long term and that's your process. So you have to know your process. For me, intermediate and active. Um, I'm going to see if we could hold today's gap and build on it, see if I could tactically make money. I went from 12 positions or so on Wednesday to, to four, you know, to four Thursday into Friday or something like that. And now, you know, on the close I did, if you're on the VTF, you saw, you know, after hours I bought a little spiders because they were trading down just to have, because I figured to myself, if we gap down, it'll be a good opportunity to buy in the hole close to the hundred day for a reversal. But if we gap up, because we're oversold, I'll be a little upset that I don't own anything. So I know for me, I can, yeah, little feeler, you know, long into the close, just in case we gap up to make some cash flow. You know, but if we gap down, I myself was ready to buy more because of the levels that were mapped out for some type of oversold snapback. So with this type of open, you have to be patient. You don't know if it's just going to grind and, and frustrate those trying to fade the open. You know, or if we're going to you know, open up and fade, trade through Friday's lows and then create some more volatility that could create opportunities a little later this week. So just keep your size down, low gross, low net. We'll figure it out. Look to the earnings. We have the Fed on Wednesday. A lot to do. Take it slow. Scott Riley, T3 Live in the morning call. I'll see you at the recap.